Hello you beautiful ones, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about a few things that like beauty gurus and influencers do that I really think that you guys should ignore. Now, I hate disclaimers guys, and I know you guys hate disclaimers too, but I have to do it because it's the internet. This video is based purely on my own opinion, so you guys may agree with some points that I bring up and you may completely disagree with some points that I bring up and that is perfectly okay. You guys are way smart enough to make up your own opinions about this so you definitely don't need to listen to me if you don't agree with what I say. And I'm not going to say any names here because I don't want to get sued. I don't want to start beef with anyone in particular and I'm not that bitchy. In this video I am slightly taking the piss out of beauty gurus but I'm also taking the piss out of myself because goodness knows I've done some of these things myself. <laughs> if you do become offended by this video or if you don't like videos like this in general, I ask very politely that you just don't watch this video at all. Just click out of it right now because if you do leave me any mean or hateful comments in the comments down below, I'm sorry guys, but I will have to delete them because I'm pregnant, I'm emotional enough as it is, and I just cannot deal with hate comments at the minute. Also, the beauty gurus in my thumbnail, I'm not talking about them in particular. Some of them have nothing to do with this video. I only put them there because they are the most influential beauty gurus and because they look good in my thumbnail. Also in this video I'm showing you guys how I achieved this rose gold glowing makeup look here so I really hope you like it. Now that that's out of the way let's get straight into the video. Some beauty gurus just put way way too much foundation on their face. I'm talking full coverage foundation, full coverage concealer, primers, sprays, setting shit. It's like that's a heck of a lot of layers. And don't get me wrong, guys, I love foundation. Like, I mean, look at my skin. I've got rosacea. My rosacea has come back with a vengeance. And I've got pimples now again as well. I've got a huge guy coming up down here. I've got a white head up here. I'm like, I should probably pop that, but honestly, I hate popping pimples. It freaks me out, so I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> and oh, while I'm talking about it, I'm just gonna get my foundation on. So I'm using the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. I love this stuff. The color I'm using, guys, in case you wanna know, it's 210. I've got fake tan on my body, but not my face at the minute. In in all honesty guys, if you already have, you know, pretty clear skin, you don't have a whole lot of skin issues, you really don't even need to wear foundation at all. Like you can wear a little bit of foundation just to even everything out. You could wear a bit of tinted moisturizer. You could even just spot conceal with concealer if you need to. And I really recommend that you don't wear like full makeup and full foundation every single day. Like you need to give your skin some time to breathe and just kind of like, you know, absorb some vitamin D and stuff. But I feel like with the amount of products that like a lot of beauty gurus pile on their faces, I feel like it makes people think they have to do that as well if they want to have like, you know, nice looking makeup, but it's just not the truth and I feel like if any beauty guru kind of makes you feel that that is the normal way to do makeup uh, you should unfollow them <laughs> not to be dramatic or anything a lot of layers on the skin and you know really thick foundations followed by really thick concealers followed by really thick powders and baking and all that stuff that's a lot on the skin and in real life in real daylight on real people without the airbrushing without the fancy studio lighting without you know soft focus cameras it can look really cakey, like it just does. So I just wanna make sure that you guys know that it's not because you're like shit at makeup, it's not because you're applying your foundation wrong, it's probably just because that kind of amount of foundation and skin products on the skin just isn't realistic for normal life. So my lips are gone. I have foundation over my lips and I'm gonna leave them like that. You know why guys? Because I wanna go in with like a really light liquid lipstick later and my lips are really pink and so they will like show through and just ruin my look so I'm just gonna leave it like this even though I look like a bit of an alien at the minute. This technique is one I see a lot from Instagram beauty gurus and that is to like drip products onto their face and I'm not gonna do it because you will come to find out that I don't agree with that technique. I absolutely hate that technique. Like I'm an old school makeup artist guys like I studied makeup it would have been a long time ago now what 2011? 2012? It was ages ago now. And back then, that was like before Instagram had taken off. There was no such thing really back then, even as like a beauty guru. And there certainly wasn't like all these weird techniques that you see popping up nowadays with like dripping products onto their face and like the over highlighting and baking and all that kind of stuff. Like none of that was mainstream. A lot of that wasn't even heard of. And so I say all this as like an old school makeup artist, so bear that in mind. I'm just gonna quickly highlight before I powder my face. I'm using the Deck of Scarlet all over highlighting stick in the color Frozen Rose. I love that name. This is a little pencil and you can twist it up from its little bum there. You can twist it down as well. I'm just gonna plonk that straight on my cheekbones over my wet foundation, like so. This is the kind of sheen it gives you. It's pretty natural, I think. I do have a lot more intense highlighters, but I like this one because it just gives you like a natural 
natural kind of glowy summery sheen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and powder my entire face with powder. Yeah, so dripping products onto the face. Like, it looks really interesting and like kind of aesthetic when you're watching it on Instagram. I get that, I know that, and that's why they do it. However, if you're a real person in real life and you're doing your makeup and you're like, okay, so obviously this is how you apply like your oil moisturizer, this is how you apply your like highlight by dripping it onto the face. It doesn't really work properly because you don't really have any control over how much you're actually applying or where you're applying it, do you know what I mean? If you went to, you know, makeup college or something like that, like if you studied makeup, for example, you would never ever have any teacher tell you to drip products onto a client's face or your own face. Like it's just not, it's not a real technique. <laughs> if your product comes in a dropper bottle, what I suggest is that you drop, you know, a few drops onto the back of your clean hand and use your hand as a palette. That is one technique I would absolutely tell you guys to ignore. The next technique that like a lot of people seem to struggle with, and the reason I know this is because I put like a little Q&A out on my Instagram stories and I was like, guys, what popular beauty guru techniques do you guys struggle with or like that just don't work for you no matter how much you practice it? And baking, baking was like the main one that came back. And I'm baking right now, right? So baking is not something I would do for everyday makeup. That's not something I would do if I'm going to work during the day or I'm running errands outside or something like that. To be honest, in real life, I very rarely bake my makeup. I will only do it on like a few occasions if I'm like going out at night clubbing or something like that and I know it's gonna be, you know, nighttime lighting so no one's gonna really see my face in like harsh lighting or if I know I'm gonna be photographed or something like that. Baking was originally developed by drag artists and they used it to create the look of feminine features. And that's kind of where it stayed until Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, Mario Dedivanovic, please tell me I said his name right. Mario Dedivanovic. He's kind of the one that brought baking into the mainstream when he showed everyone how he did it on Kim Kardashian. And everyone's like, oh my God, that looks amazing. Like that's how she kind of gets that really chiseled, really good bone structure look. And it is. However, even he says that the baking technique should not be used for everyday makeup. He literally said he only uses baking on celebrities that like a really matte, really long lasting, really chiseled look to the face. Or if he's working on stage performers. What does that tell you? A comment I get a lot from my subscribers and my followers is that baking makes them look old or cakey or tired or that it like settles into fine lines or it makes fine lines I didn't even know they had suddenly appear. And in all honesty, that is not what you want from your makeup. That's like the opposite of what you want your makeup to do, right? So my honest advice would be only bake when necessary, such as a night out or if you're gonna be doing, you know, like flash photography and you want your baking to like, you know, look good on camera or if you're like performing on stage, how cute is Darren? He just bought me a protein smoothie. When you're pregnant, you need to consume a lot more protein. This is like an absolute side note. So he's been making me like these strawberry protein smoothies so I can give my little boy all the protein he needs. I really don't like them though. Oh, that is disgusting. I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyes now because I feel like my eyes look very naked compared to the rest of my face. I'm gonna be using my own palette with Deck of Scarlet. I was artist in chief for this palette. This is what it looks like in all its goodness. I absolutely love this palette. I use it most days. It's got like a bunch of shimmers down here, which are really fun to play with. And then you've got a whole row of mattes up here and you guys know I love my mattes. You've got really fun colors like this like emerald shimmery green down here. And then you've got really natural shades as well. So it's just a good kind of all around a palette. So to prep my eyes, I'm going in with this product here. This is from Sigma. It's a Sigma eyeshadow base primer in the color Persuade. I love this for my eyeshadow base because my eyeshadows pop so much better and they stick and they last for longer as well. It's also really good to clean up your eyebrow with this product. Now I'm taking Sigma Firm Blender E54 brush and I'm going in with this like natural top shade up here called Canyon. I'm just going to be applying this into my socket. Now I'm taking a really small brush. I'm gonna go in with this one here. This one's tiny. This is a Domed Utility E34 brush from Sigma. And I'm gonna take this deep purple shade up here called Nocturnal. I'm placing this on the outer corners of my eyes to like elongate them and create like a really beautiful gradient effect. Then I'm gonna cut the crease. Now I'm going back in with the Sigma Eyeshadow Base Primer in the color Persuade. And I've got a little concealer brush here. This is my favorite. It's the Sigma Concealer F70 brush. And I'm gonna cut my crease with this. So basically I'm just taking little bits of that on my brush, gradually cutting the crease with this. 
Now I'm going in with this product here. I bloody love this. It's so beautiful. This is the Deck of Scarlet High Shine Liquid Eyeshadow in the color Melting Rose. I'm going to put this on the back of my hand, use my hand as a palette, and then I can control how much I'm applying to my cut crease with my brush. That's what it looks like on the back of my hand. It's so reflective, it's so metallic. When it hits the light, it's like having little fairy lights that shine from your eyelids. It's so beautiful. Okay, now for eyeliner, because I've done like a mighty high cut crease with my slightly hooded eyes, I wouldn't usually get away with this, but right now I will. And I'm gonna do a huge humdinger, get out of here, winged liner. I'm using the Sigma gel liner in the color Orchid. Okay guys, I'm gonna go attempt to do the same thing on the other eye and I'll be back with you probably in about two hours. Okay guys, so a thousand hours has passed and I've got this eye on as well. And I actually prefer this eye now to this eye. Always happens. If you guys don't know what Deca Scarlet is, if you've never heard of the brand before, uh, why are you living under a rock? They are an amazing cruelty-free brand. They're a subscription brand, but you can buy things like singularly if you want to. But every month they collaborate with like a different beauty guru or makeup artist or influencer. So they've always got something new every month. They have eyeshadow palettes. They've got kits. They've got amazing liquid lipsticks. Everything is cruelty-free, which just makes me so happy. And I do actually have a discount code for you guys. It's not an affiliate code for me. I don't make any commission off it. So the discount code is Steph35, I'll pop it here for you guys and I'll also put it in the description box down there. Um, and it gets you 35% off your first Deck of Scarlet palette. So that's a huge discount. Now obviously I totally recommend my palette, but you guys can go on and check out whatever you want. You don't obviously have to get my palette. So that's pretty much my eyes done. I just need to put some false lashes on and mascara, but I'm kind of sick of doing my eyes now, so I'm gonna move on to my lips. I'm hoping that when I've got my lipstick on, I'll look less like an alien. So we're gonna be using the Ofra Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in the color Dubai. It's one of my favorite, absolutely favorite colors in the world. I'm always wearing this, especially on Instagram. People are like, what are you wearing? I'm like, I'm just boring. It's always the same. It's bloody Dubai. I also have a discount code for this, but I can't remember what it is. So I'll put it on the screen here and I'll put it in the description box down below. That one actually is an affiliate discount code. So I make a tiny commission if you guys purchase from it, but you don't have to use my code if you don't want to. There's plenty of others that you can Google and find. Now onto sponsorships and I'm gonna have a little rant here guys. So prepare yourselves. If you don't like rants, you're not gonna like this segment. So feel free to skip on. I was following this girl on Instagram. She's recently had a baby. And, and I wouldn't say I was a huge fan of her or anything, but I did watch a few of her YouTube videos. Then, a few days ago, I saw she posted on Instagram a picture of her with a product. And I know for an absolute fact that that post was sponsored. And the reason I know is because I was approached by the exact same brand to do the exact same post with the exact same caption. So she's literally written down the caption that this brand gave me word for word. I was like, okay, like there's no coincidence here. Like I know this is sponsored, but nowhere in the Instagram picture does she do like hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, not even hashtag gifted, not even like, you know, the paid partnership thing. And it's like, that just probably pissed me off more than it should have. The reason being like, I'm just like, oh. the thing is I would support it so much, you know, like, a woman making money to support her baby. Like, I'm so all for that. Like, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm all for that. And I would have, you know, liked it, commented, tried to like support the post and everything had she been honest and said it was a sponsored post. But the fact that she was like shady about it just really irked me because I was like, your followers are gonna look at that and think that that's like, that you've taken it upon yourself to take that picture and write that caption because you adore and love this product and it works so well for you. When I know for a fact that you've been approached by this brand to do this sponsored post with that exact caption, which you haven't even changed. And the fact that like she didn't label it as sponsored would highly likely mean her followers are more likely to purchase it. Cause I know like people get a bit iffy when they know something's sponsored. They're like, oh, maybe their opinion's not genuine or something. The reason people don't disclose sponsorships is because they know that if they don't disclose sponsorships, they're gonna get a higher return of people actually purchasing the products that they're pushing because people don't know what's sponsored. And I just think that's so dodgy. I think it's rude to your followers, first of all, because you're basically lying to them. And it also goes against the law. Like that's against the law. If I'm working with a brand or I'm sponsored by a brand, I'll always say, and I'm not ashamed to be sponsored by brands. Like I'm so 
blessed to be working with Decker Scarlet because they're an amazing cruelty free brand. And I'm really blessed because my followers are so supportive of me and they want me to do well. Like, I think I'm, I've got the best followers in the world. I'm so bloody lucky. But I think they also appreciate the fact that I am open and honest. Like, they know when I'm being like paid by a brand. They know when I'm going to receive commission from a discount code or something like that. Personally, I think. <laughs> Whew, I'm gonna end up with like a stress rash from speaking so heatedly. Personally, my opinion, this is what I did right. When I saw that girl do that post, then I went back through her Instagram to check like, did she maybe just forget to put the hashtag out or something, you know, mum brain or something like that. I was like, give her the benefit of the doubt. So I went back through her Instagram and sure enough, there were so many posts of brands that I know and you know, posts that I know a sponsored posts like I know I'm in the industry I know because I get approached by the same brands and they want me to do the same thing and not one of them had paid partnership not one of them had hashtag ad there was no disclosing on any of them and I was like oh I'm so tempted to go back to that original post and comment and be like hashtag ad with a question mark but I was like that's so salty if I do that, I'm just going to get so much hate. And so what I did, I unfollowed her because I was like, I don't want to be a follower of someone who's so dishonest to people like me who follow her. So that's my suggestion to you guys. If you are a little bit like suspicious of an influencer or a beauty guru and you think that you're being lied to, literally ignore them, unfollow them. Because it's you guys that put people like me and people like this other girl like in the jobs that we have, it's you guys supporting us that mean that we get approached by brands and paid. So if we don't have followers, we don't get these opportunities. So if you think someone's really dodgy, the best thing you can do is unfollow them. Don't follow them because you hate them and you like to rile yourself up. The best thing you can do is unfollow and ignore them. Okay, I'm gonna have to go ahead and put my lashes on now. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Beauty guru obsessed. I'm literally obsessed. I'm obsessed with lemon water at the moment. This is like my craving is lemons and they're not very nice to eat in their own so I've just been putting them in water and oh my god it's so good. Ah, my makeup's done. I feel like a glowing princess. And I've just got one more point to make. So in conclusion, when it comes to like beauty guru trends or unattainable realistic standards that beauty guru set, feel free to ignore them. Like there's no rules that we have to kind of respect every single thing that beauty gurus do. There's no rule that says we have to do everything that beauty gurus do. Some of the stuff they do is not correct. Some of the stuff they do is not right. Some of the stuff that I do is not correct and it's not right. And when I look back at the videos, I'm like, oh my God, that was such bad advice. Remember that what looks great on camera does not always translate to looking great in real life. In fact, Charlotte Holcroft has done an amazing video on this and I'm gonna link it in the description box down below. You guys should go watch that after this video. It's very eye-opening. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, you can if you want to, you can click my face up here or you can click the subscribe button underneath this video. Make sure to click the notification bell so that YouTube will hopefully notify you when I upload new videos. And follow me on my social medias. I'll pop them right there for you guys. I love you so much. I hope I haven't pissed anybody off with this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.